The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Oh, that was strange. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and in this episode, we're building a stop motion rig, a second iteration of my project that I did before on this channel. Last time I've built a stop motion machine that makes complicated movement a lot easier. But it turns out that most animators prefer to have total control over every aspect of their animation. So what we're doing is building a stop motion machine that gives you the benefit of a professional system, but hopefully costs a lot less money so people can try out stop motion animation on the cheap and see if that is something they really want to invest in. For this project, of course, we need a camera and I want to use a professional DSLR camera like a professional animator would use. I use exactly that one that I'm using to film this video and all my videos. So that's a Nikon D3300 and I want this system to be able to work with as many cameras as possible. So I won't go into any specific firmware hacks or stuff like that. I want to have a connection, preferably over USB, that I can use with any camera. Of course, we need software to control that camera. Most professional animators use softwares like Dragonframe, for example, which is pretty expensive. So if you're just getting into that or trying to figure out if that is something for you, you wouldn't want to invest a lot of money into the software side. So I try to do everything with open source software that you can get for free. And I wanted to have the main features of these professional solutions. So I want onion skinning. That means being able to see through the latest picture to the picture before so you can make sure that they line up. I want total control of the camera, so shutter speed, uh, exposure, everything should be controlled right in the software. And I should also be able to take the photos remotely, so I won't have to touch the camera at all to make sure I won't ruin the shot with any jitter or vibrations. There are open source stop motion softwares out there, like Linux Stop Motion or Q Stop Motion but I couldn't get them to work with my DSLR camera. I know that they work with a lot of Canon cameras, but mostly they're used with webcams and other cameras that they support. So I need a different solution. And the software that I chose is called Entangle, which is originally used to make photos in a studio environment with a DSLR camera, but it has the features like onion skinning that we would need for stop motion. To make myself independent from a lot of interface solutions like a keyboard or a mouse, I want to use a touch screen and I also want to make a dedicated hardware button for the shutter control. So I have a button that I can place wherever I want and be marginally detached from the camera. So I can place myself wide enough out of shot, press the button and that pushes the trigger. Of course, the software needs to run on a single board computer but how do you choose the right single board computer for your project? Here is a handy guide. There are a lot of single board computers out on the market, but they usually fall into one of three categories. First, Raspberry Pi and the like. These run Linux, have GPIO pins that you can use to interface with the outside environment, but they don't run in a real-time mode, they have a Linux kernel on them, so they are not for real-time applications like you would do with a microcontroller. Raspberry Pis are also very easy to set up and use, so that is the obvious beginner's choice for a lot of projects. Second category, Beaglebone Black and the like. 
These are also single board computers that run mainly Debian Linux, but they also have programmable real-time units on board. These are basically real-time cores inside the processor. These are much more advanced to use, but they have a great performance and they also use a lot less power. So if you're an advanced embedded maker, maybe choose a BeagleBone. The third category is Latte Panda and the likes. This is an x86 processor board. So x86 is the architecture that you use mainly in desktop computers or laptops, at least for now until ARM really takes off. But these are compatible with a lot of programs that you know from the desktop world. You can run full-blown Windows 10 on this computer if you want that. But a main advantage of this is that it has an onboard Arduino built right into the board. So there's an Arduino Leonardo right on this board that I can use for the real-time part of the software. And I can use the x86 processor for all the higher level Linux or operating system stuff. And they can even run independently from another. So I could use the real-time part without even booting the single board computer. And I think for this project, the Latte Panda is my single board computer of choice. It is pretty easy to write an Arduino sketch that reads a single button push and then sends a keyboard command to the operating system over USB. So you can make dedicated macro keyboards or specialized buttons for your system. And the Latte Panda already has an Arduino built in, so I don't have to add anything extra to it. And I can use the systems and codes that I already know, mainly Arduino. The Latte Panda comes with Windows 10 pre-installed. So if that is your cup of tea and you want to run Windows for whatever reason, I can't imagine, then do that. I'm gladly installing Ubuntu. I tried different versions and 18.04 LTS seems to run the best on this hardware. Keep in mind that in case of Ubuntu, they made some desktop environment changes from the latest versions. So there is a significant difference in 18.04 to 19.10, for example. So 18.04 for the Latte Panda is what I recommend. First, we update the system after installing it with sudo apt-get update and and the double ampersand symbol to combine commands sudo apt-get upgrade. So we have everything on the latest versions and have all the patches installed. And then we install our software with sudo apt-get and tangle because it is already in the official Ubuntu repositories. So no hassle installing that. This is a purpose-built device. So of course I want to have everything start automatically on boot. So I boot into Linux, into Ubuntu specifically, press the super button as it's called. It's not the Windows key on your keyboard. Well, physically it is the Windows key, but we call that super button because that's what it's called. You press that, then the search console comes up, type auto start in the search console, and you will find the auto start menu where you can add your preferred programs to your auto start routine that will run on boot. If you need help, always use the command that you would use to launch that application in the terminal. So in my case, I want to launch entangle, so I use just a bare command entangle. Now to the Arduino part. We need to read a button and execute the command for the software. So let's check if we can see our Arduino on the serial port. There it is. Try to program it and it's gone. Okay, that was unexpected. It seems that flashing the Arduino core may sometimes with some versions of the Arduino IDE corrupt the bootloader because it expects a different device IDE. At least that is what I can tell from the error messages. So if that happens, you can fix that because you can access the ICSP header of the onboard Arduino directly. So let's use a serial programmer, in my case, I used the USB programmer that I got from Element 14 in a previous video to revive that Arduino that doesn't show up anymore on my serial port. If you want to program the code directly onto that chip with ICSP, you can also do that. Just use upload with programmer. But of course, you can directly upload from the device itself if you have Arduino installed on the Latte Panda. 
The same way it works with all Arduinos or clones or compatibles, if they seem to be broken, just try to reflash the correct bootloader. In most cases, they suddenly come back to life. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. Let's take a look at the Arduino code. It's not very big, I promise. The Arduino code is very simple. First, we include the keyboard library so we can send keyboard commands with our Arduino. Keep in mind that works on the Latte Panda because it's an Arduino Leonardo on there. You can also do this with an Arduino Micro, but you would need additional software for any other Arduino that does not support this library natively. We open the loop, we set up all the pins and then open a loop and all we do is check if the button is pushed, then send a blank space, which is the space bar, to the USB, which means Entangle will recognize that space and will activate the shutter. And if the button is not pushed, don't do anything. Check again if the button is pushed. And that is all you need. Easy. Seems everything works, but now we have to button everything up and make a little case for it, so I can probably use that. I designed the case in Fusion 360 and 3D printed all these parts. The display that I'm using is the original Latte Panda touchscreen that came with the Kickstarter back in the day. I have used that heavily. I'm not sure if the touch functionality still works. I may have twisted the cable a little bit too violently, but of course I will try and I will also add a power source to power everything on there from one source. So the screen, the Latte Panda and the camera is all powered by the same plug with just one power supply, a beefy one. And I will also add active cooling to it. So there's a 12 volt Multicom fan in there to keep the Latte Panda cool because it tends to run a little bit on the hotter side. That pretty much looks like a finished device. Let's try it out by creating a stop motion animation. Keep in mind, I'm not even an amateur. I'm just a guy trying it out. So if you're getting into stop motion, don't let yourself get down by not achieving the best results right out of the gate. Everybody has to start somewhere. And I start with my little wooden friend doing some exercise. That took about 1500 photos and half a day to make this little guy do some exercise on the belt center treadmill. And I've also made this little handy rig so it's not so obvious that I have to hold him because I can key that out later in post. It's turquoise because I didn't have any green paint, but that doesn't really matter to the process. So that is my animation machine second iteration targeted at beginners in animation. The total cost of this project is below the initial cost of most software that I got recommended by professional animators. So if you are just beginning in animation and you just want to try it out and see if it's fun, and by the way, it's great fun 
and especially for people stuck at home with children, that is a really great hobby that you can do together to make little fellows like this one appear a little bit alive. So try it out. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, and if it's not for you, you can use your single board computer for a lot of other projects. Speaking of other projects, if you have ideas for more stuff that we can build on the show, post it on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me.